guys welcome back to cs coins we've got a dime bag today i'm going to be shooting for silver in this video uh the last dime bag was pretty disappointing i think we only had two silvers one of them was a mercury dime so that was cool but same kind of deal with this one unfortunately i'm not seeing anything crazy on the outside so far um that doesn't always mean it's going to be a bad bag like i said in the past i have had some of my better bags like not being able to see any silver from the outside uh, sometimes they're crammed way in there. There's a ton of dimes in there, so um, they can get stuck in the middle. Um, but hopefully we can get at least a couple out of here. Um, I'd like to get four plus for this hunt. Um, almost thought I saw a silver rim right there. I got my eyes playing tricks on me. I think that's a clad one, though. But we're going to dive into this bag. Hopefully there is some cool stuff to be found. And I will let you guys know when I get my first find. So unfortunately for me, I have been just grabbing some handfuls and seeing if I can spot any silver rims. As you can see, I've already pulled out a lot of dimes and I have not seen any silver rims yet. Doesn't mean we'll get skunked, but it's definitely not a good sign. But we do have a find here. I was hoping this was a wheat penny when I saw that edge. It is going to be a Mexican coin. From 1970 it's a cool little foreign find um i hope it's not like our last bag though where it's mainly foreigns and not a whole lot of silver it's looking like it might be that way unfortunately but uh we're gonna stick with it i will try to make this a two bag video if it's not a very good bag still no silver i think we've got another pretty slow bag here but this edge did look a little bit interesting to me so i took it out of the tube at first i thought it could have been silver because i didn't really see the copper but it is going to be a foreign, which was a bit of a surprise. This one's going to be a uh, Panamanian dime, I believe. It's got the uh, Balboa Warrior on the, I believe that would be the reverse. So that's a pretty cool find. We are going to be on the board of silver. I am happy to see that. This one was just uh, shining amongst the rest of the coins here. And that's a pretty old one too, 1946. That is the oldest Roosevelt. Uh, minted in Philadelphia. Pretty good shape for being that old. It's got some luster on it still. Boy, am I happy to see that. It's been a pretty slow bag. I've been not performing the best with the dimes lately, so I'm happy to at least be on the board with one. Hopefully we can squeeze out a few more. Um, I'd be really happy to get four plus silvers in this hunt. Looks like we're going to have two silvers at least in this bag. This one I had in my hand. I was putting coins into the tube and I could just hear it clinking around so I set it down. We're gonna have a 1950 Philadelphia, a little bit chewed up but it's still silver. And we got two pretty old ones so I'm happy with that. Hopefully we can uh, keep these coming. Yeah, see it right there? We're gonna have another silver coin. It's another Roosevelt. Um, I'm thinking it's 60s just because it looks uh, pretty sharp but we did find a pretty nice 46 so it could be older. I think it's 60s based on that rim though but three silvers i mean no matter what the year is that's not bad i, I was expecting to maybe come away with one or two just because this bag's been so slow so happy to see a third pop out let's see what we got yep just a 64 i was expecting it to be um early 60s probably and yeah there we go i almost lost it again but I mean, I got all my dime rolls sitting on the bag, but we still got a decent amount left. Um, so I think that there is a chance at more silver. I, I really hope we can get four. That would make for a pretty decent hunt. That's a wrap on the $1,000 dime bag. Pretty disappointing bag. I was hoping for at least like four or five silvers. We only managed to get three. But at least I'm adding to the silver count for the year. And we did get a pretty nice 46 here, Philadelphia. Um, 64 is pretty sharp too, but that's a newer silver coin. Um, always has hair. All these bags have hair all over them. It's disgusting. Anyway, this 50 has some cool toning as well. Really beat up though. So three silvers, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm content with it. Um, if you were to search a thousand dollars in dime boxes, it would be really hard to get this many silvers. You'd probably be getting like one or two if you're lucky. Um, silver in the dime boxes doesn't come easy. Um, I do have to work harder with this method though. That's the one issue I have with it 
is you're rolling up 200 rolls worth of dimes. It's a ton of work. And then you got to get rid of them at different banks. Like the tellers aren't going to want to take a lot of dimes. So usually you have to turn in 250, 300 at a time. So I don't know. I like doing it, but I keep saying this. I got to find a better way to turn in these dimes. It's just, uh, it's too much work for what it's worth almost. I mean, this is probably $5 in silver maybe. Um, and I'm probably putting four or five hours into getting those out from the bag and rolling everything up. So don't get me wrong though, when I get a good bag, I wanna just keep buying bags. If I get a bad bag like this or with two silvers or even less, I kinda wanna just search other denominations. Um, but as far as the foreigns, this was pretty cool. I haven't found many of these, but we have one of the uh, Panama 2008 uh, Balboa dimes. And we also have got a Mexican Cinco Centavo coin from 1970. So, I mean, it is what it is. Not the most amazing hunt ever, but any hunt with silver is a good hunt. Um, I do have a half dollar bag to go through. Um, funny story about that. I had some miscommunication with my buddy who's also a coin collector. And he dumped all of his halves um, where I picked up a bag today so I got a lot of his crap um but I actually did spot a few silvers in there so I know we will get on the board with something at least um so we'll crack into that bag hopefully there are some hidden surprises in there not every half dollar in there is going to be one that he's looked through so we might be able to come up with some more silver here we definitely at least are going to have like two more I think I saw at least two in there so let's get to that so I'm not going to be able to catch all of these because obviously I, I don't want to look through every single coin knowing my buddy's already been through a lot of these. But we do have a, an IFC here. I know he doesn't really go for those. So we got a 2019D. Um, I will pick those out if I see them. But like I said, I'm mainly going to be silver hunting here just looking for edges because I know there are at least a couple in here. Um, but I also know there's a lot of crap that he's already gone through. So see you guys on the next find so i've got a couple more nifcs that i pulled out 2018p 2012d just a reminder for those who don't know um i don't know if this year's half dollars are considered an nifc um but i know 2002 to 2020 are considered an nifc we have another one here 2017p and we are gonna have a silver i popped this one out this is going to be a 1967 40%er. It's got some cool dark toning on there, so I'm happy to have that. Pulling out on NAFCs left and right here, I got a 2012D. Add that to the keepers. I already got four NAFCs. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm probably not going to, I'm going to kind of try to speed search this bag, so I'm not going to pull out every NIFC, but I will uh, continue to keep an eye out for them. There definitely are a lot of uh, shinier rims in here, so they're pretty easy to spot. Spotted another NIFC here. It's a little bit dinged up, so I might not end up keeping it. Just wanted to show you guys. Um, actually, now that I'm looking over here, we've got another one. 2017D. I'm sure a lot of them in this bag. Um, not a ton of value on these. They're typically worth about double face value, so about a buck a piece. Um, in decent condition, so... Um, definitely something to keep an eye out for when you're hunting halves, especially when the silver is slow, like in this bag. I just wanted to give you guys a little update. I haven't really been finding anything too crazy except for a ton of NIFCs. I didn't want to bore you guys with every one of these that I found. This would make this video way too long than it needs to be. Um, but I have come across quite a few off camera. Um, I would say I have a full roll of NIFCs here, which is pretty cool. Um, as I said earlier in the video, they're worth about double face value. So we've got about $20 worth of NIFCs here, I would say. Uh, no more luck with the silver as of yet, but I have faith. Hopefully we can get at least one or two more. I'm not seeing any silver popping out quite yet, other than the one we found. But we are going to have a proof right here. Let's see what we have. It looks a bit circulated. I think it's been around for a while. And that one is a 1980. That's pretty cool. I uh, don't find proofs all the time in my half dollar hunts. It's a uh, pretty rare find, so I'm happy with it. 
So I'm left with all the miscellaneous garbage at the bottom of the bag, just random denominations of coins, hairs, all this nasty stuff, lint. But I spotted this. This was quite the bummer. I think I saw this on the outside of the bag. Just assumed it was silver, because I mean, you don't see many white rims in a half dollar bag that aren't silver. But it looks like it has some kind of like metallic paint job on it or something, so that sucks. That's gonna be a wrap on the two bag hunt today. I didn't find as much silver as I was initially hoping to, but I mean, you can't complain with silver, especially for in a hunt. Um, it was a lot of work with those two bags, but um, you gotta do what you gotta do to get silver sometimes. So, got the four silvers, got the proof, two foreigns, and 31 different NIFCs. Um, I know I've had some new viewers that have been leaving comments wondering what proofs are, so I can go over that real quick. This is technically considered an impaired proof. Um, as soon as it gets into circulation and it gets all scuffed up like this, it's not really considered a proof anymore, just an impaired proof. Um, but these coins would come from mint sets, so people could buy them from the U.S. Mint the year that the coin showed. So in 1980, this was in a mint set. Um, and what a proof is, it's uh, struck two or more times, so it's got like really... Uh, defined features on it. Um, it's also hand polished and uh, the newer proofs I believe, don't quote me, but like sometime in the late 70s they started to add this um, frosted finish to all of the details on the coin. So that's pretty much what a proof is. Uh, in circulation they're not really worth much when they're found like this. They're just kind of cool oddball finds that you don't find very often. They look cool. Um, if they are in good shape, they, they can fetch a little bit of money. It, it all depends on the year and condition and everything, but just wanted to go over that because I know I've had a lot of questions about it lately. Um, also, NIFCs, I don't know if I went over that abbreviation earlier. Uh, that means not intended for circulation. And these coins would also come from mint sets. So they stopped making um, Kennedy halves for circulation after 2001 because they just weren't being circulated enough. So 2002 onwards, uh, they would just put these normal business strike coins into uh, mint sets, both Philadelphia and Denver mint on these. And um, they would just sell them to, uh, the mint would sell them to people looking for mint sets from those years. So all of these coins were busted out of a mint set. Like I said before, people pay a premium for them just because they are a bit more difficult to find. They're not, um, you know, they're not supposed to be in circulation. So pretty cool that I was able to find 31 of those, all different dates there from 2002 to 2019. But uh, I'll go over the good finds in detail a little bit more. Uh, we did have this beautiful 1946 Philadelphia. I mean, look at the rim on that. That looks like a, a 64 to me. That's like a very shiny pronounced rim. Uh, not a lot of wear on it. This, on the other hand, pretty worn down dime, 1950. Worn down rim, it's all scratched up, but still silver. And we've also got a 1964 here. That one was minted in Denver. These are the most common to find, just uh, 64 all the way to like 1960. I find a ton of those. It's mainly what I'm finding with the uh, with the silver dimes. Uh, then we, of course, got the one silver in the half dollar bag. That was quite the bummer that we didn't end up with a little bit more. Uh, it's going to be a 67 Philly. Like I said, me and my one friend that also searches bags like this, uh, he dumped a bunch of halves at a, a bank uh, and didn't let me know ahead of time, unfortunately. So I ended up picking all of, all of them up and uh, he had already been through a lot of them, I think. So didn't really, I, I was kind of screwed off the bat with that bag, but at least I was able to get quite a few finds today. Hopefully you guys appreciated the video and uh, got something out of it maybe. Um, but if you are uh, new to the channel, just checking out this video for the first time, uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button. You guys won't want to miss any of the new videos. And uh, if you're already subscribed or if you're new, uh, smash that like button. Uh, definitely helps to get my videos out there a little bit more. Um,
gives me some feedback as well. If you want to hit that dislike button, go right ahead and do that. Um, but I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I do have a couple nickel bags lined up. Probably will search those and upload that video by the end of the holiday weekend here. Um, but I'm also planning on going out and seeing if I can get more customer apps or boxes over the next few days. So definitely be on the lookout. There will be some videos coming out soon. So appreciate you guys for uh, tuning into this one and everyone have a great day.